since the coronavirus is keeping you from going to school and keeping me home, I thought I would talk to you about how I came to write one of my stories. Eight class pets plus one squirrel divided by one dog equals chaos. By the way, that was a title that struck me as being a good title while I was writing the manuscript. I kind of regret it now because it's a little bit hard to remember. Even for me, I have a tendency to say eight class pets plus one dog. Divide. No, 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 no. It's, uh, let's see. That's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have chosen that title. I started the story because my daughter is a fan of pet rats. In fact, this is one of her rats. This is Bullwinkle. When I do school visits and I show that picture of Bullwinkle, usually the kids in the classroom are going, aww, until I identify him as a rat, at which point they say, ew. So this is a picture that I got from the internet. Don't say ew before you meet me. My daughter would tell you that rats can be very smart, they are trainable, and they can be very gentle. And she would complain to me that rats always had a bad rep in stories and in movies, except for the movie Ratatouille. And she wanted me to write a story where rats were the good guys. This is a picture of my daughter Beth and her rat Leo. And it's probably a really good indication that maybe you shouldn't accept a dinner invitation at my daughter's house. I really wasn't taking my daughter's suggestion too seriously, but then I started noticing the squirrels in our yard. My husband has set up various bird feeders, but the squirrels seem to be convinced that those bird feeders are really squirrel feeders. And they will work very hard to get at the squirrel food, no matter how difficult that might be, or how close to the house. This is a picture that my daughter sent me just a couple of days ago, a squirrel sitting on the railing of their porch. Even though we are supposed to be keeping social distance, apparently the squirrels do not think that this applies to them. So I was thinking about squirrels and about rats and I started thinking about all of the various pets that our family has had over the years. This is a picture of me and my brother and our dog. This is Jack the Rabbit. Actually, his full name is Captain Jack Rabbit. This is Nellie the Hamster. We've had various fish and turtles. This isn't one of our turtles. This is a picture of a turtle that I took by a pond. We never had a parrot, but the parents of one of my daughter's friends had exotic birds. This particular picture was taken at Disney's Animal Kingdom. We never had a gecko. Uh, this is a picture taken at a zoo, but a gecko seemed like the kind of animal that might be a class pet. And again, a picture from a zoo, a snake. We have never had a snake. We are never likely to have a snake. I feel about snakes the way most people feel about rats. 
This is a picture of my daughter's cat, Lucy, and one of her rats, Taco. And the two of them got along. And that got me to thinking about unusual pairings of animals. And I went to the internet and got pictures of animals that were getting along, even though you would expect them maybe not to get along. Another picture from the internet. And the friendship between this baby hippo and this giant tortoise was so famous that they had a book written about them, Owen the Hippo and Mimze the uh, Giant Tortoise. And here's one last picture from the internet, just because it's so much fun. So I decided that I wanted to write a story that had to do with a bunch of animals in a school setting and how they helped each other. The people at Holiday House Publishing assigned Steve Bjorkman to draw the pictures. I had never met him. I still haven't met him. I live in New York State. He lives in California, all the way across the country. And even though Steve does a lot of traveling, including to Fiji, he and I have never met. But I absolutely love the pictures that he drew of my characters. This is Twitch, the squirrel who lives in the schoolyard. As you can see, he is very excitable. Uh, let me read just a little bit from his point of view. The people who live here love squirrels. They're always buying toys and exercise equipment for us, and they set these things up around a feeder to make sure we notice them. It's a mini playground with a snack bar in the middle. Some of the toys are for twirling on, and there are ropes to shinny up and climb down, and bounce beams to walk across. Sometimes, to make things extra challenging for our benefit, the ropes and poles are greased to make them slippery. Whee! It's very considerate of people to give us these jungle gyms so we don't become fat and lazy, like, for example, the groundhog. So Twitch gets in trouble when he is chased by a dog into the school after hours and ends up getting all of the class pets involved. This is Green Eggs and Hamster, the first grade hamster. He spends a lot of his time running around in the wheel, so he is a little bit dizzy. Um, this is what he has to say. I am a hamster, and I live in Mrs. Duran's first grade classroom. Mrs. Duran named me after a famous book. She says that makes me a literary pet. Literary is the biggest word I know, but I don't know what it means. Meet Miss Lucy Cottontail the second grade rabbit. Here's the beginning of her story. It's not everybody that starts school in second grade. The children in Mrs. Walter's class went to first grade last year. They were in a different building in kindergarten the year before that, and most of them spent a year or two in nursery school. Not me. I came to second grade straight from the pet shop, so that shows I'm the smartest one here. Well, maybe except for Mrs. Walters. This is Sweetie, the library rat. And this is what Sweetie has to say. I like being a rat, even though rats sometimes have a bad reputation. For example, if a person tattles or does something mean, another person might say, you rat. I never tattle and I'm not mean. Sometimes, when the parents of the students first meet me, they ask Ms. Krause, does he bite? Ms. Krause answers, does your dog bite? Would you keep him if he did? No, sweetie doesn't bite. Then she'll hand me a treat to show them. I stand up on my back feet and wiggle my pink nose. 
I have heard people say this is cute and I'm working hard to impress them. Then I take the treat very gently from Miss Krause and I eat it, holding it with my fingers. These are neon tetras, third grade fish. We are in a school. We are in a school in a school. We are tickled by that idea. The people who come to look at us call us neon tetras. We don't know about this. We just know that we are. Each of us has bright blue stripes and bright red stripes. We shine in the dark. We are very beautiful. Even one of us would be very beautiful, but we aren't one. We are a school. This is Lenore, the fourth grade parrot. Hola! That's one of my favorite words because I come from Puerto Rico and that's how people there say hello. The Spanish for please is por favor and thank you is gracias. Those three words cover a variety of situations. Another of my favorite words is nevermore because that's a refrain in a poem called The Raven. A refrain is a word you say over and over. I like to say words over and over. Lenore also likes to say poetry. I do have to say it's not a really good poem that she ever says. Uh, let me give you an example. Sitting in the trees, I sometimes sneeze as loud as you please. With a beak as big as mine, you need to draw the line, or a sneeze will rattle your knees. But you don't have to write excellent poetry to be a poet. Nancy is the art room turtle. She explains to us the difference between turtles and tortoises, including this part. Tortoises live on dry land, but we turtles spend most of our time in the water. But sometimes we like to have dry land to crawl up on. My beautiful glass case has both, along with a nice heat lamp to keep me warm. Mmm, nice and warm and cozy. Mmm. I'm sorry, I fell asleep there under the lamp. Where was I? Angel, the fifth grade corn snake. Sassafras. Isn't that an absolutely delicious sounding word? I simply love saying sassafras. Society also has succulent syllables, as does suspicious. The society I'm in is Mrs. Shaughnessy's fifth grade classroom. Suspicious is how outsiders sometimes react to me because I'm a snake. They say I'm sneaky and slithery and have slimy skin. Sneaky and slithery, yes. But stroke my skin and see, I'm not the slightest bit slimy. These are Galileo and Newton, the science lab geckos. They have a little bit of sibling rivalry going on. Each one always tries to have the last word um, or whatever the most important word is or the first word. Um, they're Dialogue is written in play format, so just the name and what they say. Galileo. Most geckos sleep by day. Newton. But we are day geckos. Galileo. So we sleep by night. Newton. And are awake during the day. Galileo. Just like the students in Mr. Russell's science lab. Newton. Well, most of them. Some of those students seem to like to sleep during the day. Even Cuddles, the principal's dog, eventually gets to tell his story. Master lives right next door to the school he owns, so I get to see him a lot. Sometimes he brings me to meet the children there. This would be a perfect place to live, except for that nasty squirrel, Twitch. 
Twitch acts like he owns the yard. He eats the seeds Master puts out for the birds. He jumps from tree to tree just out of reach and calls down to me that people like squirrels better than they like dogs. He says that's why Master ties me to a long rope leash when I'm in the yard. He says that's why Master puts me on a short chain leash when we go for a walk. No leash for me, nuh-uh, Twitch brags. He runs back and forth just beyond where the leech stretches to. He says, ha ha, your master doesn't make me wear a collar and leash to keep me in one place. He must not trust you, Cuddles. So that's a glimpse into eight class pets plus one squirrel divided by one dog equals chaos, written by me, Vivian Vandeveld, illustrated brilliantly by Steve Bjorkman and published by Holiday House. We had so much fun with eight class pets that Steve Bjorkman and I and Holiday House teamed up yet again for Squirrel in the House. And the last book in the series, at least for now, is Squirrel in the Museum. And once again, I am lucky enough to have Steve Bjorkman draw absolutely fantastic and fun pictures. I hope you enjoy them, and I hope you enjoy the stories.